G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. It's good to see you again. Uh, you know what I miss? I miss the wide stuff. I've been doing like all this very long focal length stuff, getting in really close to targets. And uh, you know, I miss just a wide patch of space. And it's been a few years since I've done any piggybacking. Do you know what piggybacking is? Piggybacking is this cool thing where if you've got a big scope, you can just chuck a little scope on top and ride it, shotgun. I'm gonna do that and I'll tell you something else. This is so typical of me. I will buy something and then I'll use it once or twice and then I'll put it away and then years later I'll be like, where is that thing? Where's that thing that I bought that time? And then I'll buy another one because I just can't find it in my piles of stuff. Anna, I know you laugh when you come into my office and you see all of my stuff, but it's good stuff. I'm not a hoarder. You're not a hoarder if your shit's really cool. I've been thinking for a long time that I needed a new adapter to do this piggyback. This is the Celestron sort of universal piggyback adapter so you can put a camera on there, but it just doesn't have the stability that I need to put something bigger than just a small camera on this. This camera here onto my big C11 telescope. And then it dawned on me, I can just use these. I've had these sitting on the guide scope and the guide scope I haven't been using for a long time because I switched off axis guiding. So I can slide this onto the dovetail at the top of the scope and then I can put anything into that. I love this. So I'm gonna give it a go. Hopefully this works. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. focal length it's about 400 millimeters uh, manual focus uh, can I still move focus no don't have any guiding though because normally I have the off-axis guide to set up here so I think I'll just do some simple stuff uh, just take advantage of the fact that I know this is polar aligned so even without guiding I think it's gonna do okay anyway because this is used to uh, zooming into things that you know 2800 millimeters I'm only using 400 here so I reckon that's gonna track pretty nicely without guiding anyway. We'll see. When was the last time you bought yourself something? Not your kids, not your significant other, but you. Are you looking after you? If not, you should buy something from High Point Scientific. You know you're into this hobby, you want something else, don't you? Whether it's a focuser or a new camera or a piggyback adapter, High Point Scientific has got you covered. They are a New Jersey astronomy warehouse that has pretty much everything you want. All brands, they have no specific interest in pushing any particular thing, they just wanna help you out with your astrophotography. And they have a price match guarantee, so really there's no reason to go anywhere else. Tell them I sent you, that's probably really annoying, or use the links down in the description so I get some money because I want to buy something for myself. That's www.highpointscientific.com. Now this went pretty well. My first light test was sort of okay. I mean I got some data but I realized when I went out there this problem that I had. I'm at this period of the night sky at this time of the year. Things are pretty blank. The Milky Way is setting over the western horizon. On the other side of the sky, the Orion Nebula and the whole Orion region is rising, but it's blocked by my house, so I can't see it. So above me at the zenith, there's really a whole lot of nothing, uh, which left me in a bit of a pickle. I did try the Corona Australis Nebula, this dark nebula, just as a proof of concept to see if this worked. And I learned a few things, so I'm gonna go through them with you. When connecting the DSLR to Nina, uh, you don't need to install any additional drivers. Canon and Nikon are both supported, as well as all these other cameras, which is good. But you will need the Canon camera turned on and plugged in with USB in order for it to show up in that driver list so you can select it. Make sure the camera is selected on bulb mode, so that way the Nina software can then give instructions to expose at different lengths and different ISO settings. And when I was setting up, I didn't think about the battery placement, the fact that the camera will be 
up there on the telescope, you do want to make sure that you can actually open that battery compartment and swap batteries out if you need to. Another little tip is to set up mirror lockup if your camera supports it. Just put a second or two in this setting in Nina so that if you have a mirrored camera, it flips the mirror away. When that happens, there's usually a little bit of vibration. So mirror lockup will flip the mirror and then wait a second or two before actually starting the exposure. So that just gets rid of any little shaking in your setup there. Uh, I stopped down the aperture. You have to do this on your DSLR before you connect to Nina. So actually go into the settings and change your aperture. I didn't set the lens all the way down to 5.6, which is what it can go down to, because I found that that produced a little bit of coma in my stars. So I stopped this down to about seven, I think. Unfortunately, after stacking my first light data, I realized that there are donuts. And not the good kind of donuts. The bad, bad kind of donuts. I knew that the data was not great. So I took the time on the next night to really dial it in. And to do this, because it is manual, because you do have a lens on your camera that you need to physically turn up and down, I used the HFR readout in Nina so that I could see on screen what those values were and sort of like finding the V curve, you manually go one way, see the number climb, you go the other way until it starts climbing in the other direction and then you go back to the middle to get that lowest HFR half flux radius number as you can. And from then, my data was okay. So then I had to pick something in this blank sky that was actually gonna leave me with a result. You know what I picked? You know, I often wake up on the couch after a night like that and no regrets whatsoever. There's a Japanese word that means revenge, nighttime procrastination. It's the concept of getting control of your life or feeling like you're getting control of your life by stealing away those nighttime hours and refusing to go to bed when everyone else does. <sighs> I've got to show you this data. This is how the telescope ended up last night. Just to give you an idea how low it's not bad, right? Now you're probably wondering, uh, I've mentioned down there it's unguided. So how did I get such a clean result without guiding? There is no streaky noise in here, there's no banding, there's no walking noise. Uh, it's because I'm dithering. Another little final trick, you can use the direct guider in Nina so that if you're not guiding, it still sends dither pulses through to the mount and dithers between each frame. So there you have it. I managed to steer Leo Girl, Andromeda Galaxy, from the Northern Hemisphere all the way down here in Byron Bay, Australia, which is always an achievement. Uh, it's not the greatest photo, obviously it doesn't compare to uh, the stuff you guys are doing up in the Northern Hemisphere, but it is a result and it is piggybacked. It was actually blowing a gale last night and the setup is so big and so rock solid that the lens had no wobble whatsoever. So I'm pretty happy with this result and uh, hopefully you got something out of this little experiment. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. Thank you.